Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then went back home. One of the first philosophers I ever had to study was the French mathematician, scientist, philosopher, René Descartes. Maybe because he was the first, he still sticks in my mind. But I don't remember too much of what we were taught about him. One of the things I do remember though is that his understanding of how the world is came from a system of thought that he developed based on doubting everything. He took nothing for granted and he believed that if he could find one thing that he could be absolutely certain of, he would be able to reconstruct the whole world from that one certain point. And he believed he'd found that certainty in his famous cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. I wasn't entirely convinced at the time, but I wasn't really sure why. Looking back, it seems to me that Descartes doubted everything other than doubt itself. That was the one thing that he kept hold of from his idea of deconstructing everything. Where I really struggled with Descartes is how quickly he started rebuilding the world from that point. He jumped very quickly, it seemed to me, to being able to prove the existence of God. I'm probably greatly oversimplifying his argument. I might even be misrepresenting it altogether. Philosophy 101 was a long time ago. But I think his argument went something like, I doubt, therefore I am not perfect. But I can conceive perfection, and since perfection cannot come from imperfection, that concept, that idea, must have been planted in me by something that is perfect. And that perfect thing is God. Now, it seems to me that there's a few flaws in that argument and one giant leap. To me, I think that Descartes is defining God into existence rather than proving the existence of God. And why Descartes comes back to mind? Well, it's partly to do with today's feast of the Assumption. While I've got no 
problem believing in the presence of God. I do have problems with Descartes' proof of the existence of God. And similarly with today's Feast of the Assumption, that at the end of her life, Mary was assumed body and soul into the kingdom of heaven. I've got no problem believing that Mary is in heaven. But the mechanics of how she got there, them I struggle with a bit more. The idea that Mary's in heaven has been around from very early on in our church. And the theology behind it has developed greatly over the centuries. But wasn't defined absolutely, clearly, until relatively recently, until the 1950s. Before the church felt able to do that, it wanted to raise a couple of questions. It wanted to satisfy its belief that this, this teaching was universally accepted, that the great, the vast majority of Catholics believed it. And also that this doctrine would be theologically suitable, that it would be in keeping with the, the rest of the faith that we have. How they went about satisfying that first point was they asked the bishops and they asked the bishops to ask their people. Is this something that you believe? And over 90% of the bishops came back and said, yes, we and our people believe this. My problem with that is that they were asking people who had grown up being told by a church that they by and large trusted that this was true. I don't think it should be any surprise that when asked if it is true, they turned around and agreed with the people who had been teaching that truth for generations. And as for the theological suitability, well, that doesn't surprise me either. But I find it more, I find it easier to accept that. The argument that was put forward is that in accepting this belief, that Mary was assumed body and soul into heaven, then the people would be encouraged in their faith that heaven was their ultimate goal too. And that, I think, is a good thing. Despite my doubts around some of the, the mechanisms by which we came to this point in faith, I do find a great deal that's good in this festival of the Assumption. And for me, it's not so much about Mary, but about us. To paraphrase the preface for the Feast of the Ascension, where Mary has gone, we hope to follow. It's an affirmation of our faith in the hope of heaven. René Descartes believed that doubt could lead to truth. I think that's probably true. It's in questioning that we discover truth. We uncover it. We, we deepen faith in it. I think the challenge, though, is not to decide what that truth is before we'd ask the question, 